Hey folks, this is Tobias Summit of Avantasia and you are listening to Sonic Perspectives. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo, and my guest today is Mr. Tobias Summit of Edguy and Advantage. Tobias, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. Yeah. Let's talk about the upcoming Avantasia album, uh, A Paranormal Evening with the Moonflower Society. Uh, it comes out tomorrow on October 21st. Uh, are you the type that looks online to check reviews and the fans' reaction or not really? I'm uh, I'm really happy with what I've read so far, what I've got uh -huh. to read so far, um, and what I've heard so far. And it seems like the people I talk to, everybody, maybe they're afraid of my reaction. That's why they <laughs> just tell me that they like it. But it seems like uh, it's not complete shit. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, and let me ask you, how does the, the new album connect with the previous one, Moonglow, uh, lyrically and musically? Um, musically, uh, it connects. It's it's just the logical continuation, I believe. I did not try to have a, a change in sound or style. Um, hmm. I just always do what I want to do and what I feel and what my intuition tells me. I don't really think about it too much. And in fact, two of those songs on the new record are um, are leftovers from the Moonglow sessions, uh, okay. at least songwriting-wise. And that's Arabesque and Misplaced Among the Angels. They are songs that have been written around, I think, 2017. Oh, okay. lyrically, lyrically, it's um, I think they, there are similarities. And I think the general topics, the topic of not fitting in, um, having a hard time to meet expectations, feeling a bit different mm -hmm. and feeling the need to um, to disappear in your own little world. I think those are topics that have been dealt with uh, on both albums, I think. Got I think it. the new album is a little bit less solitary. Mm. Uh, it's, I think it's more, it's not this isolated, misplaced entity left, uh, left on its own. I think it's more, it's this, it's the individual um, or let's put it this way. It's, it's, it's like, um, I see it more as, um, the album is a visit. Is, I approach the album like a visit to a magic theater whose protagonists would invite the listener or drag the listener. It depends on how you, how you, um, take it, um, mm -hmm. into a, into a, a fantastic world of its own, like Alice down the rabbit hole, if you right, like. Right, right. And yeah. um, the album deals a lot with escapism, and it deals a lot with quirky characters that um, that offer you um, or that grant you admission to their world, where you don't feel you're the only lunatic mm -hmm. in in, your, in this club. And, right. Um, I approach, I approach, the, I think, you know, the Moonflower Society, they are like the protagonists of that magic theater that invites you uh, into their world. And they, I think on a different level, they equal the, or they stand for the, the, the characters and the imaginations and the inspirations and ghosts and muses and spirits that I surround myself whenever I, lock the studio door behind me and start to become creative. There's also those entities and those spirits and those inspirations and, and ideas that take me into a different world and help me to deal with real life in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so uh, I think in general, the basic, the reason to write those albums have been similar um, for Moonglow and for this new one as well. 
Okay. And I think uh, what you just mentioned about the character and the fictional world, it's reflected in the cover, which I sense a little bit of Tim Burton influence and never end his story a little bit, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. uh, it's really funny because the characters, they are just, um, it's not that every of those characters you see on the artwork has an equivalent in, in the album, a character okay. on the album. But it was funny because I had this stage and it was empty because I wanted to tickle people's imagination. Mm -hmm. And the stage was empty on the first draft of the album cover. But I, I told the artist, it looks a bit empty, the illustrator, Alexander Janssen, a Swedish guy who usually paints children's books covers. Okay. Uh, and I told him, it looks a bit empty. We need the Moonflower Society. But you're, you run the risk when you do something like that, when you have this surreal society that should tickle your imagination and you draw him actually and put him on the artwork you run the risk of uh doing something spinal tap task in yeah. a way yeah. so i said okay do something make paint a quirky surreal group of ghosts and non-existent entities and characters and he came right. up with those weird fellows and yeah. i loved it i said that's exactly what it has to be like and I guess he's inspired by Tim Burton as well. Tim Burton yeah. is never really a bad reference when it comes to my work. Absolutely, yeah. And speaking of the singers and guests uh, on this album, there are only two uh, singers that haven't sang on the previous Aventasia ones, Ralph Skeepers and Flor Jensen. Uh, how did they get involved? And what's your process to invite someone to participate? Um, they were, it was, uh, I was in generally, uh, or in general, I was really happy with the people I had worked with before because the core team, mm. um, Ronnie Atkins, Eric Martin of Mr. Big, Jeff Tate, um, Michael Kiske, Jorn Landy, um, who did I, Bob Catley? <laughs> I was yeah. just wondering, who did I forget? <laughs> uh, I, I think those, you know, they give me so many options um, yeah. because they, are, they have such different voices. They cover the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. vocally and they are so inspiring to me and when I work with those voices I can pretty much say everything I need except those little things that I I needed somebody else for and that was um I wanted to um to work with Flor Janssen because I had talked to Sasha about how great I think she is for Nightwish and how great I think um she she is as a singer and Sasha said yeah absolutely um, Sasha was really, really talking great, speaking great about her um, mm -hmm. because uh, he knew her from back in the day when he was producing After Forever. And he confirmed that she's an amazing singer, also technically in the studio. So I said, okay, we need to do something with Floor. <laughs> and I had written yeah. that song, Misplaced Among the Angels. And that was, as I said, a leftover from the previous album sessions. And I... I asked her, you want to sing? And she said, yeah, I'm going to do it. And I sent her the song and she said, mm, I'm not sure. That's not exactly my range. Don't you have anything else? And I said, okay. oh, never mind. And I sent her um, the other track. I, I wrote her the other track, I have to say. I wrote her Kill the Pain Away in a few days only. Sent her the track that was tailor-made for her. She accepted. She loved the song. She did it. And she also sang misplaced among the angels on top of it because she said afterwards hmm, i listened to it again and to the other one it works quite well too i sang <laughs> them both so yeah. that was the reason why why floor was involved and uh, i don't regret it at all great singer amazing yeah. voice and with with ralph shapers it was quite easy i wrote the song uh, the wicked rule the night and after i had written the verse I knew there's only one person I want this song to, I want to sing this song. And, um, and I got in touch with, with Ralf. I sent him a text message. We had known each other for a very long time before. As well. Okay. And I sent him a text message and said, Ralf, you have to sing this song. I have this Avantasia song. Nobody else will be able to sing it like you. I know it, trust me. And this is not a request. This is an order. <laughs> it's no, no joke. That's in a way. And yeah. he, he kind of, um, he got back to me and he said, yeah, send it to me. And I sent the track to him, nine o'clock at night. He got back to me and he said, that's an amazing song. Give me a few days, give me a week. And I'm going right. to record it in my studio. And, I, and next morning, 
it was 11, between 11 and 11.30, I got a text message uh, from him and he said, hey, check your mail. I just sent you a wee transfer. I sent you the wow. song, it's recorded. <laughs> so he sang it overnight. He was in love with the song right away. And it was really, he hit the nail on the head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And my favorite song of the new album is Arabesque, I have to say. Uh, I never thought someone would be able to write a song with Celtic and Middle Eastern influences together. How did that occur to you? Um, this song is a big mess <laughs> in a positive <laughs> way because it's not only yeah. Celtic and, and Oriental, it's also got Queen influences in there, it's got yeah. Telemann influences in there, it's got Carl Orff classic in, influences in there. It's got 70s prog rock influences. It's yeah. got a bit of Black Sabbath. It's all of that. It's a it's big It's all you mess. can eat. Yeah. All you can eat. And Sasha, <laughs> Sasha, the co-producer uh, or producer, whatever, you know, Sasha, mm -hmm. the, 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 my partner in crime and, and, and musical friend, he said, Toby, this is a mess. How's this going to work? And I said, well, look at an arabesque. Mm -hmm. An arabesque is a pattern that consists of many individual threads and they're all woven together to a beautiful harmonic artwork but those individual threads don't necessarily fit together very well it's just the way they're being put together and it works and in the bigger picture that's all also like our life you know yeah our life is full of we are facing expectations different expectations from different people we add our dreams that are completely different to those expectations others have towards us. We add our duties, we add fate and, and things that we cannot control that happen and that, that define our way and our decisions. And this, the whole melange of those things, that big mess, we have to stir it and turn it into our life and turn it into our happiness. And that's been a challenge for me quite often as well, dealing with, with, with expectations and with my own dreams and desires and with the things I want to do and the things I have to do. And, um, and that, that's, that's the concept of the song in, in a way. And I made the different musical um, sources and roots part of the concept. And all of a sudden, this big mess made sense. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I think also I'm very proud of it that we, we managed to, to put all these elements together and it doesn't feel like it's, it's, uh, it's, it consists of many different elements. It doesn't feel like those elements don't belong. It yeah. feels like a very harmonic magnum opus. And that's Absolutely. something I'm very proud of. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, Ralph Skipper is doing, you know, a song on the heavier end of the spectrum. The song featuring Michael Kiske is undeniably Halloween sounding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you decide who's going to sing? I mean, do you write the song with the singer in mind or do you write the album and then you say, who's going to sing this part? Um, there's <laughs> never a rule without an exception. I mean, okay. the, ha the Halloween songs that I steal of course, have to be <laughs> sung by the Halloween singer that I steal. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, no, but it, seriously, I mean, Halloween has always been a huge source of inspiration. And it's not a secret that Avantasia would probably not exist without Halloween, because when I started the project in 99, it was one of the reasons I did it was because I wanted Michael Kiske to be back singing traditional heavy metal. And he had been out of Halloween for six years and I wanted him to sing those kinds of songs. And right. he didn't want to do it with Halloween. So I thought somebody has to write those songs and make him sing those songs again. And to this day, it's in my musical DNA. And it's, it's just pure joy for me to write these songs and have his voice on them. On, and it's so, in, so deep down in my DNA, because that's where it, where it got when I was a fan, that whenever I write such a kind of song, I... I imagine it's like, for me, it's like Michael is sitting next to me. And when I imagine his voice to sing those kinds of songs that I'm just about to write or that I'm just writing while I'm at it, I, I can hear his voice sing that. My imagination works like, 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 a, 
It's like a speaker inside. I can hear it and it sounds pretty much like what he's doing afterwards. Right. That's my musical imagination is pretty accurate when it comes to those. This is the same for Jeff Tate, by the way. Mm -hmm. I can hear Jeff sing songs that he doesn't even know <laughs> <laughs> when I imagine it. Yeah. So, um, and sometimes it's also quite the opposite. Sometimes you write a song and like I Tame the Storm on this new record. It was a song I knew it was, um, it was a great lick. It started from the guitar lick that I had on my mind. I wrote that down and I recorded it as a demo. Um, and uh, to me, it sounded a bit like Iron Maiden, mm -hmm. like a modern version of Iron Maiden. Yeah, I and, was going to say, um, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't obvious to me that Jorn would sing the song, but at some point, and I can't really remember at which point during the arrangement process, I thought, well, we could let Jorn sing that song and it would take a completely different direction. It wouldn't be Iron Maiden anymore. It would be something, uh, though it would be Jornished the song yeah. and i had your your niche the song and all of a sudden it was a different kind of song um but that was not planned to be sung by your so you never really know and that's the exciting part about it so, sometimes you know who's going to be the singer right from the start um but sometimes the same thing uh, or, or a different story um but similar to that your experience when i wrote rhyme rhyme or reason that was a European power metal track. It was almost like Ed Guy and Gamma Ray and early Avantasia. Okay. And <laughs> I, needed, I needed a vocalist who would, I wanted somebody to loosen it up a little bit. I wanted somebody who would, who would add a little swing solo to it, uh, a shuffle beat swing solo as, as you always, or as you mostly find in rhythm and blues music. And I have a singer in my environment who is very, very good at this because Eric Martin has a rhythm and blues background. Yeah, uh, You can hear <laughs> Mr. Big, it swings a lot. So I asked Eric, uh, it was at, at first sight, not really an obvious choice, but then I remembered that once on tour, Eric had told me, Toby, why do I always have to be the ballad boy in Avantasia <laughs> just because of to be with you? I want, to be, right. I want to be one of the power metal family as well. <laughs> Give me a metal song. And here it was. And at first he was surprised, but um, it turned out to, to, to be a very, very good choice. And he, he gave that song a very special feeling that it wouldn't have had if I had sung the, uh, sung the verses. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, I imagine that also planning an Avantasia tour is a logistic nightmare. Uh, how do you line up all the schedules of musicians Musicians were so in high demand and do budget estimates and book flights and everything? It, it's a nightmare, right? Oh, yeah. I have, I have a very, very good agency for that. And okay. I think they, they are really, <laughs> they, they have nightmares sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's not always possible to get everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not because I cannot, I cannot expect them to, to um, put their own business completely to rest for a summer season just because Avantasia yeah. may get a couple of shows in. Uh, so we always have situations. This year we didn't have Jeff. Uh, that was for health reasons. Um, yeah. He had to have a, a surgery, I believe, and everything went fine. And I'm very, very fine. So Jeff is going to be part of Avantasia in the future. He's a lovely guy. I absolutely love Jeff. I love his, his voice. And, and he's actually a, a very, very nice person, a good friend. Very funny, actually. A lot of people don't know how funny Jeff Tate is. A lot of people think, oh, he's this distant person, this <laughs> mysterious person that doesn't get close to you. Yeah, I thought the same thing for eight minutes. And then we had drunk half a bottle of red wine. And ever since, we're best friends. So right. <laughs> it's, it's, anyway. Um, so it's not always possible to have everybody on 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 the stage. Um, I, I remember we had um, North American shows without Bob Catley. Um, yeah, uh, it is because he was he was demanded in Magnum in I think in England or somewhere in continental Europe. But anyway, it's not always possible. We always try to get a good lineup. We always try to get. Um, 
a, a singer that represents every type of voice, or uh, not, not a singer that represents every type of voice, but one singer for every vocal characteristic. So yeah. then we have a great variety of singers that can pretty much cover everything we need. Um, still, it's a lot of work. Still, it's hard work to organize. Um, but so far, I don't know. We you have pull it off. to make it work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Of course, yeah. And as a Brazilian, I can't not ask you this, but uh, one of my biggest idols in metal was your friend, Andre Matos, who sadly left oh, yeah. us in 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. What was it like working with him? Uh, f fantastic, funny. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it was really funny because he was a very, very funny character. Very deep, I have to say as well. Mm -hmm. He was very, very um, a true artist. He was very, um, he could be very introvert. He could also command um, uh, an audience. So he was introverted yeah. behind the stage, as many of us. Behind mm -hmm. the stage, very calm. And when you would throw him on a stage and in front of an audience, he would rule them. Yeah. Um, he was lovely. He was gentle. He was funny. Um, very, very great character. Very good character. And what a musical talent. I mean, Absolutely, he was not yeah. just a great singer. He was also a great piano player. He understood music in so many ways. And he wrote so many great music, melodies and, and, and harmonies. And he was, he was an overall very good musician and a nice person. And yeah. his loss is absolutely, uh, yeah, it's um, terrible. I mean, we yeah. were on stage together six days before he passed away and I know, um, yeah. we had yeah. we had not seen for for two years maybe and we went we met before the show and it was very very heartwarming and warm and uh, we went on stage at the show and after the show he was not there which was a surprise for me but I thought mm. maybe he didn't feel too well and somebody also said oh he didn't feel too well he went home and I said okay I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him in a couple of days we're going to speak um, because I also thought, oh, he might be a great, great addition to future tours and shows because it's about time to do something with him again. Wow. And six, six days later, I, I got um, I woke up and I got a text message and it said uh, my, it was my tour manager. And he said, um, Toby, there's a rumor that Andre has passed away. And I thought at first I couldn't believe it. I thought like, what the fuck? I mean, there had been yeah. rumors that I had passed away as well uh, in the past. <laughs> and so I thought, yeah. no, that's not, that's not. But right. then yeah. like, after yeah. two days, yeah, two, two hours later, it was confirmed. And yeah, it was devastating. I know. Yeah. But thank you for the kind words anyway. I think uh, every metal act in Brazil that came after Angra followed that kind of footsteps and for the template that they laid out. But yeah, yeah. And speaking of Aventasian, I mean, it was meant for uh, for the studio initially, but uh, it became one of the most successful touring entities in metal these days. Uh, how was the process from thinking that it was just a studio thing for to being your main gig these days, pretty much? Um, it was just, uh, in the beginning, I just had done it to to fulfill my dream and work with Michael Kiske and work with fellow singers and work right. with other musicians and gather some experience because I had already done four albums with that guy and I thought I was moving in circles. We were all moving in the same soup all the time as we say <laughs> in Germany. Uh, I needed new input. I needed new excitement and I wanted to do something outside the band. So I did those two records. It was a lot of work and I said, okay, finally, now I have done it. Now I can focus on, on Edgar. And Avantasia also helped to boost Edgar back then. Because after the Avantasia albums, Edgar kind of sold more and got mm. better tours. And, and so I was perfectly happy. But then, I think in 2006, um, I wanted to work with Sasha Pett, who I, I had known meanwhile. Um, we had worked together on... Um, on uh, with Shaman, with Andre again, and he had produced, yeah. um, um, he, had, he had recorded Andre for the first Avantasia record. He had recorded the drums and the bass guitar for Edgar's Hellfire Club. So I said, okay, he's just a great musician. I wanna do something 
completely with with Sasha. Mm -hmm. And I wrote two songs and one of them was Scarecrow. And I thought if I ever going to do Avantasia again, this would be the way it should be. And I, we wrote some more tracks and I knew this was going to be the revival of Avantasia. So right. I, I did it. And when we found out um, or when people heard that there was a new Avantasia album in the pipeline, it was we promoters came asking us for live shows and i always said no no way i'm not going to do it <laughs> i have a live band i'm not going to organize right. that stuff and Wacken open air came and offered us some seriously good money and also a headlining slot on friday night in front of eighty thousand people there you go and can't say no to that <laughs> no exactly yeah. and i was yeah. one i i was afraid of saying yes because uh -huh. I knew it would mean a lot of work, but I also had to say, okay, I have to, if I say no, I will never be given a chance like that anymore because yeah. fate will look at me and say, no, he's not worth it. He's going to ruin <laughs> it anyway. So we did it. And after we confirmed Wacken, it was boom, boom, boom. It was uh, Sweden rock was asking. We got offers from Tokyo. We got offers from Moscow. We got offers from Sao Paulo, from right. Buenos Aires, from Mexico City, from uh, Budapest and Milan and everywhere. So and it took off, um, yeah. yeah. So it was getting, we played, I think we traveled around the world in three weeks <laughs> and played like 12 shows in, I don't know, 10 countries or something like that. Wow, um, incredible. It was yeah. insane, but yeah. that was how it was born. And um, yeah. I became used to it because it was really great. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Last question for me. When can we hear about the touring plans? I know you have a concert in Sao Paulo already booked for April 2023. Yeah, well, right now it's really difficult to put a tour together. We are trying yeah. to make things happen as good as we can, but you can never really tell with the economic situation in the world with the political situation in the world, yeah. with still, uh, you know, the whole COVID thing going on and still, you know, it's it's still affecting the world economically and also health-wise, not so much anymore, but economically still. Yeah. Um, it is still very, very challenging. Long story short, I hope we can play as many places. I hope we can play. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be a tour as it used to be like 70 or 60 shows. Uh, back to back um, but let's see I think some people are just at this very moment wrecking their brains and uh, we'll see what comes out um, I don't intend to not play shows uh, <laughs> so yeah. I really yeah. I really think something's going to happen okay all right Tobias thank you so much for your time and the interview all the best with the new release thank you very much and have a lovely evening you too take care bye thank you bye, bye.